Do you guys hear that? Is that boss music? Go naked and just go with the sword and that's it. What do I do with all this? <laughs> it says it in the title. <laughs> I'm a slut for roguelites. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Unearthing Games podcast. I'm your lead excavator, Nick, and today I'm joined by... Hi, my name's Erica. And we dig games. Before we get into all the games, uh, Erica, what have you been up to this week? This week, I actually played um, a few games, which is new. <laughs> I don't usually get a chance to play some new games. but um, So I played the game that I'm going to be talking about this week. But I also played a series of short stories, I guess is how they would be described. I think they're described as short stories on their, um, they have a Kickstarter page and they have um, like their itch.io pages. Okay. Um, they're described as short stories. And so the ones that I played um, was a set of three short stories and it kind of followed this one boy and his journey as, um, so he's basically like an immigrant from France into the UK and it it follows his journey in what I think is like some like it's it's not like UK how it is now it's more like an extremist UK type of society um and so it's it's following his his story as far as him coming to the UK and the challenges that he deals with and I thought it was pretty good um we'll have to leave a link in the description or something to those um, other than that, we played some Fusion Frenzy yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. That was miserable. <laughs> I mean, I, I I have good memories of it. Like, I remember playing it because it's a original Xbox game. Mm -hmm. And I remember playing it when I was younger because my older brother had an Xbox. And we played it, and I remember it being fun, very um, Mario Party-esque. Yeah. You know, mini games and stuff like that. Like, what's not to love? And then... We played it, and holy cannoli, the computer is on another level. Like, they trounced the bejesus out of us. Yeah, we had it on, on medium, but they were... Mm. Oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they, they we, Like, in certain levels, we would get, like, 300 points, and their points would be, like, 600. So they were always, like, doubling our score in any game we played, so we had no chance. Yeah. We lost. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, what at the at the, at the scoring round, it would always be that that one uh, girl character woman. She'd be like, "You lose," and it's like, "Oh, oh no, I hated don't, her." Don't yell at me. I in know. In all of the the game modes, it's like, <laughs> "Oh, collect this thing by you know jumping around and you know collecting it, and then you can hit B to attack the other players and make them drop their stuff." And all she was doing was just hitting me the entire time, so I never got to do anything. And I was like, "How the heck is this person like?" Oh, that was very frustrating. <laughs> I tried to turn it back on them. Like I tried to, I tried to like hit them to steal their stuff, and it just it didn't, didn't do anything. Work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, there was like a press Y for Bob and Weave, and we just didn't get that memo. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, we couldn't hit anything. <sighs> but yeah, Fusion Frenzy. Don't don't go back. No, <laughs> don't go back. It's, yeah, only look forward. Let's <laughs> say anything else. Uh, not much. I'm I'm trying to start a pretty large knitting project, and I've been just getting yarns and testing out gauges and just different yarns to figure out what I want to use for this project. But that's about it. <laughs> all the uh, all the science that goes into your craft projects. I I would say more math than science. <laughs> I'm just imagining you with like little like beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks, and it's like, Eureka! I have found the pattern. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know it's not. That's not how it works. But like, when you talk about like testing and and all that stuff, that's what I think of. I'm like, oh, she, yeah. <laughs> She's off in the off in her craft room doing mad science. Oh yeah. Yeah. When you finish the project, you yell out like, "It's alive!" <laughs> I don't know something. <laughs> It'll be great. But, but yeah. What have you been up to this week, other than Fusion Frenzy yesterday? <laughs> other, other than Fusion Frenzy, which was a, a an awakening experience. You know, like I said, it, <laughs> I, I thought that it was a fun game. I remembered incorrectly. Um, other than that, though, I've been trying out some different stuff. Um, 
played the game that I'm going to talk about today a lot. Like, a lot. <laughs> and, um... I don't know. Other than that, I've been... I guess kind of delving into my Steam library. And, I mean, trying to, like, look at all the different things that I have. Like, I have such a mountain of shame when it comes to all of the games that I have. I know that that's part of the reason why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go through and start kind of like thinking ahead, you know, instead of thinking week to week, like planning what games I'm going to play for the podcast later on. And it's just, it's both like enlightening, but like also kind of like, it's like I'm disappointed in myself because I have all these games and I've probably have it installed or played like more than like, like three fourths of them probably I haven't installed yeah. or played, and so it's like wow, I'm a hoarder for video <laughs> games. <laughs> you are a hoarder though, but because you do a lot of like the humble bundles and stuff like that. So <laughs> well, yeah, I know. And we we so just did the um, what was the one? The Yogg's Cast Jingle Jam. We do that guy every year. Yes, and they always have a good like what twenty to thirty games in there in the Jingle Jam bundle. Mm -hmm. and it's like it's for charity so why would i not yeah <laughs> then like every year i get 30 more games added to my library at the minimum yep. <laughs> and that's assuming i didn't do any other humble bundles or anything throughout the whole year so yeah but i will applaud like thanks to those humble bundles i probably have a lot of games that i'm going to try out for the podcast that i probably never would have given a second glance to mm -hmm. otherwise and i i think that'll be really good i think that'll be very um like refreshing as far as my video game experience. Oh yeah, I I definitely think you know you having all those games because I play a lot of your <laughs> games when we're doing this. Um, it it is definitely playing games that I probably wouldn't have even thought about buying or would have even found if I had just been looking for games myself. Yeah, I mean, we, if we hadn't started this podcast, you never would have discovered that you don't want to play platformers. I know. <laughs> But I mean, before, you were like, maybe I could, maybe I could. And now you're like, I don't want to. See, but like growing up, I always played platformers. Like I'm thinking back to like my Game Boy and like, what is it? Wario, Wario Land? WarioWare. WarioWare. Is that what it was? That was the weird, like, the weird crazy one where you're like, like plucking hairs and stuff like that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like, like it was a, a, a 2D platformer. It's like Wario Land 4 or something that I had on my Game Boy. Hmm. Okay. And it's, it's like a Mario game, but you're playing as Wario instead. And, like, I always played Frogger. I had, you know, the Frogger games. And I don't know. Like, I, I don't understand why now I, am, I, I just can't. I don't know. Maybe my attention span is getting <laughs> shorter because Maybe. I can't just, like, play those kinds of games as much. Maybe anymore. you just have to keep looking and you'll find a certain platformer that talks to you, that, that, that speaks to you, you know? Yeah, that's Kind of true. like how, um, like, what is it, what, what was the one that, like, that really got me into the, the modern platformer shtick? It was um, Hollow Knight, right? Oh, yeah. I yeah. played that, and that, like, like, I mean, like, I'm sure I played some platformers before, but I didn't, like, really decide that I loved platformers <laughs> until I played that game. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I want more. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe you just have to keep looking, you know? Your platformer love is out there, and you will find them, <laughs> you know, someday. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I also feel like there's, like, platformers that they just pride themselves in being hard, like Super Meat Boy and stuff, where it's, like, it's just insanely hard, and that's not something that I find enjoying very much. Okay. You know what I mean? I've, I, well, I don't know. Maybe well, a puzzle maybe platformer? To, um... Well, no, because Thomas Was Alone was a puzzle platformer, and you didn't care for it. So maybe what you need to do is find a like story driven platformer like like Mario and stuff, you know, where it's it's less about the platforming being a challenging aspect or a puzzle aspect of the game. Yeah. And more of the platforming is just a medium to progress the story along. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I'm, I'm thinking about it. There are tons of platformers where like you jump around on the levels and stuff like that. And maybe you have a weapon that you hit bad guys with or something as you're traversing from left to right, you know? Mm -hmm. There's, I, I'm pretty sure I have tons of platformers like that. I can think of a few off the top of my head. One you should try out is called Time Spinner. I played it years ago, and it was really fun. Story-driven platformer, very Metroidvania kind of thing. 
So maybe that maybe that's the type of platform you need to play as a Metroidvania platformer, you know? Yeah. Where you where the, the jumping from platform to platform is not it's not the challenging part of the game. It challenges you in other areas. Yeah. Or I can go back to Wario Land for what that's I wonder true. I wonder if that's what it's even called. You'll I think you'll it dig was. it up, we'll we'll bring it up next time on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll play that between now and the next <laughs> podcast because nostalgia. <laughs> exactly. You'll you'll do it. I know I know I, I'm confident i know where your your little mini nintendo thing is yeah we have them all in a in like a like a pencil box yeah. all of my games what was it a game boy micro i have a you? micro and then uh the sp okay okay yeah. and then we both have three ds's yes stashed somewhere somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> they'll turn up i'm sure they're probably right next to your your micro and stuff all right, probably. But... <laughs> All right. So enough about that. Um, I guess, Erica, why don't you kick us off and tell us about the game you played this week? Okay, so I'm very excited about this game. Um, this happened sort of last minute. Uh, the game that I was going to talk about just ended up being way too short to talk about on the podcast. Um, so we were just sitting you know, on the couch one night and we were going through the um, games in the Game Pass, right? It was the Xbox Game Pass. And this game just, it just caught both of our eyes. And so this game is called Call of the Sea. And it is by, the developer is Out of the Blue and the publisher is Raw Fury. Um, on Steam, their tags are adventure, puzzle, story, rich, and first person. Um, Wait, it says female protagonist for me. Oh, does it say that for you? Adventure, puzzle, story rich, female protagonist is what it says on Steam for me. Oh, mine says first person. Weird. Why? Would... <laughs> it's, like, it's like Steam knows you're a girl and they're like, we're not going to show her this empowering <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no, it's first person. Yeah. I mean, you're the protagonist, female. <laughs> nah. I, but I don't I'm know. not even logged into my account on this. Yeah. I'm just on the web browser and I'm not logged in on there. Oh. Somehow I'm logged in the web browser. I, I don't know what's up with that. Uh. Cookies. But, <laughs> but, I, but I'm telling you, it says female protagonist for me. But both is true. Both, both, are, both are true. true. Yes. It is a female protagonist, and it is in the first person. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So this game, so it's a very story-rich game, so I don't want to spoil any of the story because this game is relatively new. On Steam, it says it was released on December 8th, 2020. So. Wow pretty relatively new um so i don't want to spoil any of the story because like i said it is very story driven but the basic premise for this game is that um you the female protagonist uh, i think your name is nora you yeah. have some sort of ailment that your mom before you had suffered and she died pretty recently and once she died you started experiencing the same symptoms and the the one main symptom that they ha that they talk about throughout is that she has spots on her hands. Um, they're not, I don't know if they're red, but they're just like discolorations on her hands, and it goes up to about like mid arm level. And so when you first meet her, she's on a boat going to an island, and so that's where you start out when you open this game. You're on this boat. And you kind of look around the cabin that you're staying in and stuff, and you find out that uh, if you read your journal, <laughs> something about this game is, I guess it expects that you don't read your journal because it explains a lot of things to you later than the, like, the notes and stuff you find. Um, anyway, so <laughs> if you read your journal in the very beginning, um, <laughs> you find um, a note, a letter written to you by your husband. And what's your husband's name? Charles? Harry? I Harry? It's Harry. Okay, Harry. Yeah. Um so Harry had gone off on an expedition. So I guess that's he I think he's like an archaeologist or something. And so he goes off on some expedition to try to find a cure for your ailment. And he sends you a letter that basically says, you know, come to this island. Um and he sends you like a a weird like dagger looking thing. Um, what else did he send you? He also sends oh, you. Uh, there's a key, right? A golden key that says yes. like CW or something like that. Yeah, a key. That's what it is. And so he's just like, okay, come to this island, whatever. And he's been gone for a while. Like you haven't heard from him or the crew or anything like that. And so 
you go off and you're you're gonna go to this island that's where you are on the boat and this it's over near the island of tahiti at least that's what the note had said it's like so yeah. many miles east I think it of tahiti was, what was it like 74 nautical miles west of tahiti or something like that yeah at one point they like stressed it like that and i was like it stuck with me <laughs> yeah so you're going to this island and once you get to tahiti itself you start asking around for people to take you to this location and everyone's like super superstitious about this island and they're like no it's cursed whatever we're not going to take you finally you you <laughs> you you What's the no you annoy this poor captain so much oh. over the course of three days that he decides, fine, I'm gonna take you and leave you there and then Yeah. <laughs> well no, I remember was it the journal entry was funny, it was like after three days of begging Captain whatever his name was, he agreed to take me, and upon payment he said that no payment would be necessary, that me leaving him alone would be payment enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after pestering him for three days. <laughs> um but in in the in the thing also he doesn't agree to take you to the island on his boat he's going to park off away from the island and you're going to take a little motorboat dinghy into the island because he doesn't even want to get close to it like that's how su superstitious people are about this island for some reason um and so the whole game is you going through this island and trying to figure out what happened to your husband and if he actually found the cure for your ailment and there's i think six chapters in the in the game yeah. it, go, it goes by chapters so each big area is a, is a separate chapter but you're going through and there's all these kinds of puzzles where it's like okay here's some vague clues that your husband left you you know here's the tools he was he was using try to figure out the right answer and it's a lot about, like I said, reading the notes <laughs> that are left everywhere. Um, just the way I play these types of games, I guess, I was just reading everything. Um, but like I said, the game does give you some hints if you haven't read the notes. <laughs> like there's just <laughs> some things where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, so I'm going to have to go do ABC. And then you get to the place and the lady's like, oh, maybe if I do ABC, this will work. And it's like, well, yeah, we already know that. We read the notes and we know that we're supposed <laughs> to do that. <laughs> um, but it's really good. I loved this game. It had a great story to it. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything about the story, but the gameplay was great. Um, you're walking around first person and you're just looking for all these notes and trying to f solve puzzles to advance you further into the island. Um, to figure out where your husband went because everywhere you go it's as if he had just left so you go to the first campsite and everything a lot of stuff is still there but some stuff is gone and you find a note that says that they went to some other part of the island and so you're continuing to follow along through his footsteps basically and his his journey through this island to find your career cure and you're trying to see if he actually did and also just where is he because he never went back home at least as far as you know um yeah. but yeah but <laughs> i would i would definitely say like i i know i sat and watched slash played most of this with you yeah <laughs> um because it is just such a charming game it's mm -hmm. amazing so like i i applaud out of the blue for such a fantastic storytelling mm-hmm very um thinking about it now very hansel and gretel like you're following the breadcrumbs yeah you know because like no no one location ever gives you any any semblance of the whole story you only get snippets about what happened at this location mm -hmm. specifically you don't know anything about what happened anywhere else like they, they like apparently his group never backtracked or something i don't know <laughs> it was really cool uh i also wanted to say like i mean <clears throat> the soundtrack the um the music and like the audio of the environments and stuff like that was phenomenal. Like there was one chapter where I think it was raining. Yeah. And just the rain like pattering on the rocks and just everything. It was so thematic and just gorgeous. Yeah, and if you went under trees, like it would be muffled sounding. Exactly. Like, it was it was great. <laughs> like this this game is a piece of art and it is amazing. But it's such a great experience that, yeah, like we definitely don't want to spoil anything because you got to go and play it 
you, you gotta you gotta go and play yes. it's so <laughs> great it's also really pretty it's just so beautiful and it's so like you're on this island in you know the t in near tahiti and the so there's island <laughs> yeah there's all these the plants are so colorful and like the sun rays coming through the the canopy of the trees and stuff it's just it's beautiful i i really loved this game yeah it was it was phenomenal i am um, thinking about it i don't think like for us it wasn't a very long game but i also think that you're smarter than the average bear when it comes to puzzles <laughs> So it's probably a, a decent length of a game, especially if you don't read the journal. So much like how we're trying to teach ourselves to read the rule book, if you're playing a puzzle game, read the notes. Yeah. Especially if the developer was kind enough to give you notes. Yeah. Like I'm thinking back to like uh, puzzle games like Myst and stuff where they didn't give you a notebook. You had to flip and write that stuff down on your own. And oh, <laughs> I know. I love that that part of this game is you'll you'll see certain like symbols or you know different items that you need to remember to put into some other object you know further down the line and she'll always write them down in her notebook and whenever you open your notebook it's open to whatever the most recent page is so it's just easy to like open it and close it real quick to like check references and it's like okay what was the symbol again let me look at it real quick okay that's that's what it is. Let me press this button. Um, so that was super helpful. I, yeah, I, I agree. Even the Nancy Drew, Drew games, which I, I absolutely love, they don't give you a notebook where she writes everything down. So I always play with like a pad of paper next to me so I can write <laughs> stuff down as I'm going through. <laughs> but this one, it, it did that really well. It wrote down all the notes for you that you needed as long as you looked at everything that you needed to. I also thought that um they did a pretty good job about like, basically, like, whenever you looked at, I don't know, like, markings or someone's papers and stuff like that, like, it seemed like she wrote everything down, like, indiscriminately. Mm -hmm. So they did a good job about, she doesn't just write down clues for the puzzle. So it's like, they're not just going to give you the answers, you know, you do have to kind of discern out of the notes. Well, you know? I think, I think the way that they did it was interesting because they had... In your notebook, you had two tabs. So there was the the notes, and then there was the journal. So the journal is where she wrote everything down, like a narrative, basically, of what's going on and what probably happened to her husband in this certain point in time. But the notes themselves were very, very easily de deciphered as, you know, here are the five symbols we've seen. You know, and it didn't necessarily tell you, like, here are the five symbols we saw, and here's the order of how they go into this puzzle. That's what it, it was just, it would show you the five symbols, and then you would have to figure out what they were. It just made it a lot easier, so you didn't have to keep running back and forth to be like, oh, what was that symbol again? Let me go look. Or, you know, writing it down yourself. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. They, they, never, they never straight up give you the answer. Yeah. They always, they give you all the all the relevant information for you to to um discern that yourself mm -hmm. so <laughs> yes it was so fun i loved it it did take us like two evenings to play i think maybe three i think it two was three. Or three yeah yeah I think um, it was three evenings so it was a good length the puzzles were really good there was only one that we didn't really understand at the moment but it was also midnight <laughs> and so we we're just like let's just figure out like find the answer online somewhere and just get yeah. through this so that we can save it and go to bed because <laughs> but i i am proud of us so that that was the only one that yeah. we googled we didn't google anything else you know scouts honor that kind of stuff yeah and if we had just like just saved it there and come back the next day, I think we would have figured it out. It was but, pretty straightforward once I figured once we knew what it was, it was. It was like one in the morning yeah. and we're <laughs> trying to solve a puzzle. And it's like, we gotta get through this before we go to bed. We could do this. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good. I, I actually had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I don't think I would like playing puzzle games on my own. Okay. But I, I think I enjoy playing them with you, mm -hmm. where it's like we get to kind of like have that collaborative back and forth and we kind of talk about, well, it could be this, but like, why do you think that? And, you know, but like if I'm playing it just by myself, I, I think I, I would tend to get very frustrated. OK, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. It has been a long time since I played mm -hmm. a straight up puzzle game by myself. I mean, I'm talking like back. 
flip like missed two like <laughs> riven and and that game i mean is is his is like historically like one of like a really tough puzzle game which is why i got frustrated and went never went back to the puzzle genre <laughs> um <laughs> maybe i'll have to go back and try it out the guys who, who did mist were great but yeah what call of the sea right? call of the sea it yes call of the sea the developer is out of the blue and the publisher is raw fury i highly recommend it i really loved this game a fantastic game and oh yeah th those are the guys that published that my game last week was it bad north yeah the raw fury people yeah so kudos to raw fury man <laughs> we've got two two for two of their games so far oh uh, if they have more we'll, ha we'll have to go and look at their website and see what else they i was publish. gonna say if they have more story games i so need to play them <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to look and see so yeah that was fantastic okay well um I guess now that we've talked about yours, I'll go ahead and jump in and talk about mine. So I, I think I mentioned this one briefly in one of our previous podcasts, but um, this is a game called Control. Um, it is developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by 505 Games. So I'm vaguely familiar with both of those names, but talking about it now, I don't remember what Why? I know either of them from. <laughs> but I, I know I am familiar with seeing like those words like flap up across the screen, you know, as the game's loading. <clears throat> but enough about that. Um, <laughs> Control's steam tags are action, adventure, female protagonist, and sci-fi. <laughs> um, it should also have first-person shooter. Well, third-person shooter. Yeah, I was like, it's a third-person not... shooter. Maybe just shooter. Shooter tag. Um, I'm just going to straight up say this game is phenomenal, and I love it, and I can't put it down. Um, I have not fully mastered the whole game yet. I'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> but, so, the base premise of this game is you play a, a girl named Jessie Faden, who, by some way, they don't, at least I haven't found that explained yet, she stumbles upon this building in New York that it's got this weird sort of Doctor Whovian thing where like the building is laying in plain sight, but it's got some sort of magic power that no one notices it. If that makes any sort of sense. Oh, is that really how it is? Because I, I, I saw the very beginning of this where she walks into the building yeah, and it just seems like some other government building just on the street kind of thing. Yeah, but but apparently like there's something about this building that like, like unless you know about the building or if you have some sort of like innate psychic or magical power, mm -hmm. you don't notice it. Like oh. I, I, I guess like it does something where you purposefully don't see the building. Interesting. Like okay. I'm sure like like in your memory, it's like oh yeah, I walked past that government building, but you don't think about anything. You don't think about it. You know, like it. At least that's how like the you find a bunch of notes throughout the game. Like this game <laughs> is chocked full of notes that you don't have to read them. Mm -hmm. But they do help a lot. It has a lot of clues on like how to fight certain bad guys and how to deal with certain puzzles and stuff. Well, it's not really puzzles, but <laughs> it has a lot of story. A lot of there's a, it has a very rich story just playing the vanilla game. But if you read into all the notes and stuff you can find throughout the game, it has such a deeper story that if you're willing to dig for it, it reminds me a lot of like um, in other games I played like Mass Effect and stuff. They would have like a, a codex sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Where whenever you did something, you get like a little journal entry. You could go read about, you know, more information about those sections, you know? Yeah. So somehow Jesse stumbles upon this building, right? The Federal Bureau of Control. Mm -hmm. um, she stumbles in and like, basically, as soon as she walks in the door, weird stuff's going on. She um, kind of like monologues a lot. Yeah. You you hear her, her inner voice a bunch. And that's kind of how they give you the plot. Um, progression as the story goes along it's like well why is jesse doing this and she thinks about like here's what i want to do and then you the player go out and do it you know and so she also explains a like like her perspective on a lot of things as you see weird stuff in the the, the bureau so with within the first like two three minutes of the game you uh find yourself being dubbed director of the federal bureau of control <laughs> right it's really crazy, and when it first starts out, nothing is very clear about why you suddenly have this <laughs> title. Um, basically, like you, you stumble into this office, and you find a weird gun on the table. You pick up the gun, and all of a sudden, it's like Arthur drawing Excalibur out of the, the stone, you know? It's like, boom! You Congratulations, <laughs> you're king! 
And it's like, what? <laughs> and the, the gun is, it's called the, the, the service weapon, is what all the documentation refers to it as. And this is some weapon that's passed down from director to director, you know? Okay. And it's a magical weapon or something. <laughs> I mean, it's a gun. You shoot bullets, right? Or it shoots something. I don't know what it shoots. It acts like bullets. It's a gun. <laughs> but uh yeah so you get dub you get dub director and then something you get told that something is going on in the bureau like the bureau is under lockdown because they are under attack by some sort of paranatural entity um it's pretty cool and so this has to do with basically jesse's whole journey um i think she says in the very beginning when she walks in the i, I don't want to say too much about the story so i'm gonna try to keep everything to what happens in the first minute first like five <laughs> minutes of the game that way i don't spoil anything okay like when she walks in apparently she's been looking for the federal bureau of control because they have her brother like they took him they arrested him abducted him something mm -hmm. i'm still not entirely sure about the about the, the how, how about the how they got him yeah. but they have him and so she's been looking for him for like 17 years so now she found them <laughs> and she becomes director of the place and it's under attack, and she has to basically try to rescue the Bureau from attack while simultaneously trying to find her brother okay. within the bowels of this magical building. Um, has an amazing visual aesthetic. Um, I, I originally played it on Game Pass, and so the Xbox graphics were okay, and then um, I loved it so much I went and bought it on Steam because <laughs> I, I, I also wanted the DLC, so I bought the DLC, and I will say having a bit more oomph behind those graphics just makes it look oh, so smooth <laughs> it's so great like it's so every all the lines are clean um even like as she's running around her hair like whips around as she's like running places and stuff you know and i was like <laughs> that's nice physics you know it's like it's not something you should really care about <laughs> when you're playing hair the game physics. but the fact that like there her hair is not just like a static helmet on her head it looks nice it's very pleasant i don't yeah. usually care about visual vis vis i don't usually care <laughs> about visually appealing games <laughs> But this is a very visually appealing game. Um, it is an action shooter, so you like you know you you fire at bad guys, you take cover behind things. It it doesn't have a specific cover mechanic, kind of like a, like Gears of War, like you don't snap to like walls, you know, to take cover. Mm -hmm. But you have like a squat mechanic, and there's plenty of like things to hide behind desks and stuff, you know. Yeah, you're it's giant. Office. It's giant office building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the game is amazing. Thinking about like the trailer. As you progress throughout the story, you unlock different powers. Like, she gets the, like, a force throw. You know, like, I'm, I'm throwing Star Wars in here, where she can pick up <laughs> objects and, like, throw them at people. Then she can get a thing where she can pick up objects and protect herself with them from enemy gunfire. Then, um, she can, like, take, like, mind control bad guys, you know, like, like I think, like, one at a time or something. Mm -hmm. And then I think she can fly. I think, I think you see all of that in the trailer, right? Those are the basic powers you unlock. They become more complex as you level them up. It has this really awesome storyline. Getting into the DLC, the DLC is even more amazing. <laughs> um, I, I did complete the story, but I have not read all of the logs yet. Because you start, it gets to a point where you start finding logs at such a rate that, like, it's like, do I want to stop and read the 10 logs I just found in this room? Yeah. Or do I want to go keep exploring the story? <laughs> Well, so, so this, th that's something that I noticed when you were playing this initially when I was watching you at the beginning is you found a lot of logs and it didn't just like open them. You had like you would find a piece of paper and it would be like, cool, you found this piece of paper. P press and hold this button if you want to read it. I, yeah. I would prefer if it would just like open it and you can just like hit B to exit out of it real quick rather than be like oh, you know, go read that some other time. That's just me personally. Like, no. I prefer, I, I like reading the logs and stuff like that. But the fact that it's like, okay, well, I found it. Let me press and hold this button for a few seconds. Okay, now let's read the, the log. Yeah, I, I think that would have made it, that, that would have definitely encouraged me to read it a lot more often. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, I think they should have done something like that because sometimes you would find these little paper logs and they would kick off side missions. Mm -hmm. You know, like it would be like a a report about something that happened in the whatever wing of the office. Yeah. And then, you know, it'd be like, oom, quest started, whatever, whatever. And then Jesse'd be like, oh, I guess I should go to the whatever wing, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm like, 
well, why? And then I go and open up that log. It's like, what, what the heck did she just read? Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And I think that would have been a very simple but cool mechanic because all of these things are little like one pager. Mm-hmm. There are like on um, like company letterhead basically. Like, all of them are like formal doc. It's all formal documentation, you know. Yeah, the that ones that finding. I saw, they were all like little memos, like memo to so and so. This is what this document is about, basically. Yeah. Exactly. So, very very fun game. It's very beautiful. The combat is is is. It's not hard, mm-hmm. but it is challenging. And so I thought that was really cool. And um, I guess because of the variety of powers that they give you, it does kind of encourage some creativity as far as how you want to mix and match the different powers. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was really good that they kind of gave me some creative license for how to do stuff. It's not just run in the room, shoot the bad guys, move to the next room. Yeah. I mean, granted, at the, at the end of the day, that is what you're doing. <laughs> you know, you go into the room and then... It uh, it does have some backtracking, which uh, but they did they did a good job of backtracking. So like you weren't you're never just running back through empty rooms and stuff like that. So I thought that was great. <clears throat> it does have like a like a checkpoint system. So I always kind of harken back to the Dark Soulsian barn fire, bonfires, you know. Mm-hmm. So it had that. I did think it was a there was a neat thing where they in some of the documentation about the building itself. I'm I'm very obsessed with this building. It's neat. Um, <laughs> It's very Hogwarts-ish, where it talks about, like, the building will shift and move and things will change where they were. So, like, you know, it might be that this department was on the third floor today, and next week it might move up to the seventh floor. You know, mm-hmm. like, it might, like, shift. Kind of like how the stairs at Hogwarts would move around, and so the stairs yeah. were never always in the same place. <laughs> so, I, I, I thought that was really cool. Um, like I said, I, I haven't fully beaten it yet. I did beat the main storyline. Um, and the DLC doesn't kick off until after you complete the main quest. Okay. So, I thought that was really cool. It does have um, a lot of, like, hidden Easter eggs and stuff like that. Like, if you're willing to read the logs and go <laughs> looking in random nooks and crannies, it has a lot of cool little, like, not treasure, but, like, like neat things to find. Like, like there's, like, hidden boss fights and stuff like that if you're willing to go look for it, okay. you know? And, like, whenever you do the boss fights, like, there's always, like, a cool reward. Like, I know one of them got me a, a different outfit. Because, like, Jesse starts out in, like, blue jeans and a leather jacket, you know, and, and like, a like a tank top or something. And mm-hmm. that's, like, her starting outfit. And then, like, you can unlock different outfits as you do certain things in the game. So, it was really cool, honestly. It is a ton of fun. I, I am going to keep playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got to at least complete all the DLC and stuff. Like, I don't think I'll get all the achievements, but... I want to know where the story goes, you know? <laughs> Say, this random lady off the street walks in and becomes director of a federal agency? It's like, how does... What? <laughs> how does this work? You, that's how it works. You could just go over there and, and become anything. So, <laughs> like, if I walk into, like, you know, the FBI offices and I walk into the director's <laughs> office and pick up his pen, I become the director kind of thing, you know? <laughs> sure, why not? Go ahead and give it a try. <laughs> Let me know how that works out. <laughs> you know? Uh, but it's it's neat and there there's a ton of npcs you meet throughout the throughout the process because there's like people who have survived the the attack and all that and then you're, you you meet them lots of interesting characters the voice acting was really good it did have that problem that i think a lot of games that go for like realism like hyper realism in their characters and stuff where the faces aren't quite right mm-hmm. where like they talk and they're like you know, like, like their mouths are just moving like really big and stuff like that. And like mm-hmm. the words are coming out, but the lips don't quite match up with what they're saying. It's like, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. So a little bit of that uncanny valley stuff, but nothing, but nothing too bad. All, all in all, it looked great. So it is, it is a fantastic game. Apparently, I think it's been out for a year now. You can get it on Steam, Epic Game Store. It's on Game Pass if you want to try it out before you buy it. Um, but it's amazing. So Control by Remedy Entertainment and 505 games yeah tons of fun yeah like i said i'll keep playing it i gotta i I gotta beat it (laughs) gotta beat it all (laughs) all right well so now we've gone over our games our our video games let's go ahead and jump into our board game or card game i guess in this instance it's a tabletop tabletop game game. (laughs) um this week we played a game called i'm gonna call it cristallo cristallo it, it, it's C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-L-O. So, pronounce it how you will. It's about <laughs> crystals. There's crystals in this game. 
Yes. So this is a really cool game. This was one that Erica and I found at PAX <laughs> this, this past year, right? Yes. It, it, was, well, it was whatever the last PAX we went to. Whenever that was. <laughs> the 2020 PAX, I think. <laughs> the one in January, right? Yes. Yeah, before the plague. Um, yeah, we found it. I think um, the same thing attracted us to this one that attracted us to um, Fire Tower. Fire Tower, right? It was they, they had shiny little, shiny little crystals. Yes, I love these <laughs> little crystals. So I really <laughs> wish games would do, would pay a little bit more attention to the the pieces that they put into their games. You know, like there's a lot of games like uh, Caverna and Agricola where your player pieces are just flat round wood circles <laughs> and like fine you know you're the 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 value of that game is in that the gameplay and how long it takes and stuff but I, I really wish people would also make the games look pretty and inviting to come and play um so that that was yeah something that brought us into chris cristallo Cristal. i i say let's Cristal call it cristallo cristallo oh, let's go with cristallo okay. i think that, that rolls off the tongue easier <laughs> if we're wrong We'll find out later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's something I really liked about Cristallo is it had those colorful, clear, like resin looking gems. Um, and so the game. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me um let, let me let me drop the, the plot of oh, okay. the story. The basic story of this is that you are some sort of adventure, right? Doesn't matter what kind of adventure you are. But <laughs> the evil black dragon has captured and imprisoned six magical creatures um, and you have to rescue them and with their powers combined hopefully <laughs> imprison the black dragon with his own magic mm -hmm. that is the synopsis yeah so as far as the mechanics of the work uh, as far as how the mechanics work <laughs> erica why don't you uh take it away so this is something i really loved about this game is that since one of my favorite games is solitaire <laughs> this this is actually a, a one player game and you can play it with multiple people me and nick played a round of this together the other night and the the only way to play together is to actually work together to get you know the dragon captured um so you're you're basically working together on the same one player game and it's just to to throw strategy back and forth like oh where should we do this um, so the way this game is played is you have a deck of cards and each card is a different is a different combination of two things. So <laughs> there are crystals on the cards and there are also orbs, spirit orbs on the card. And so the way this game plays is you have six different creatures that are captured by the black dragon, as Nick mentioned. And each creature has three gems on it that are keep that are keeping it locked by the dragon's power. And so in order to release them, you have to create combinations of three crystals around a spirit orb. And so each of the cards kind of is like domino style where on it'll have like a crystal and an orb on one side or just a crystal or just an orb. It just depends on the the type of card that you pull um so there's a variety of the cards and the the goal is to form little clusters of three crystals around the spirit orb so basically they make a square once you're once they're all complete there and by encircling the spirit orb that's how you you slowly take one orb away from one of the gems off of each of the 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 creatures uh <laughs> to to unlock them and so there are six of them. Each of them has three gems. So that's 18 different orbs that you have to unlock. Um, and like I said, you do that by matching crystals. And so you can match crystals in different ways. So there's three colors of crystals. There's purple, orange, and red. And then there's also three different like numbers or shapes of the crystals. So there's a crystal that's just one solo crystal. There's one that has two crystal points, and there's one that has three crystal points. And the way you make these uh, matches of three is one of four ways. You can either match all of the same shape, but not the same color. You can match all of the same color, but not the same shape. You can match 
all different colors and different shapes. Or what was the last one? I'm suddenly drawing a blank. <laughs> so it's all shapes, all colors. None of it. Oh, there's one more. Oh, this is going to eat at me. <laughs> what is it? You, you could do one where it's one of, one of each type of crystal, right? I think that's the one I'm missing. One of each shape. Yeah, yeah one of each shape. There you go. So that's what it is. <laughs> all of the same color, all the same shape, but not same color. Same color, but different shapes, or all the same shape. There you go. Yes. I think that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you're basically playing these cards out like dominoes. So you'll pull the first card, and it'll have, you know, it'll start with whatever's on there, usually an orb and a crystal. At least one orb and one crystal. Usually it's an orb and two crystals. Sometimes it's two orbs, two crystals. Um, but you just start pulling these cards and placing them as you're going, following these rule sets. So you always have to make sure that you're, you know, making you're aware of what colors you're using and what shapes there are because you can't you know put you just can't put some certain places um and the interesting thing about this is the way that you can overlap the cards you can actually overlap them so it blocks some orbs but it's more beneficial if you can get one of the other orbs and it, it's really interesting as far as the this the placement mechanic because there's a lot of different ways to place these cards um which I thought was really cool because in a lot of games it's like, oh, you know, it's, you know, edge to edge and that's it. This one you can actually stack them on top of each other. Um, and that makes it really cool as far as the, the, the strategy behind how to unlock all the orbs. Yeah. Um, an additional thing is that there are some cards that have items in the center. And there's three different types of items. There's riches, there's magic, and then there's like gear like fighting gear right yeah so um they the 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 real way i think to win the game is to unlock all the creatures capture the dragon and have all of the items like that's the the expert level that's the, the highest score you can get <laughs> yeah and so so when you when you set up the game first you set aside nine cards from the deck of cards, and those nine cards are what you, you're going to use to to trap the dragon. And so it's completely random what they are, and it's only nine cards. And you have to get one of each of the color gems onto him in order to trap him. So you have to, you know, you have to encompass six different orbs in order to beat the final dragon. And... The way that you can get more cards is if you use less cards in the first round. <laughs> so if you're able to go through the first round and free all of the creatures and you still have cards left, you can carry those over to the next round where you're trying to capture the dragon. And so it really incentivizes you to be very smart and resourceful when you're going through the first round so that you don't use a lot of the cards. That way you have a lot left over for the next <laughs> round. <laughs> because if you don't, then there's only nine cards. And with luck of the draw, you might not have all of the six orbs, which is, yeah. which is very solitaire-like too. Like when you play a game of solitaire, there are instances where there's no possible answer just because of the way that the cards are drawn. It's, you know, it's the randomness of the shuffle. Um, and so I think that's something that's really cool too about the game is you can just sit there and play this game over and over and over and no game will be the same because you're going to either spend a lot of cards in the first round and only have the nine to capture him or you'll spend very few in the first round and have tons to capture him but maybe you still don't because your strategy didn't work out yeah. um it's it's very i i really enjoy it but that's because i love solo well, games <laughs> and, and i think very much like, like you said like can't you in solitaire can't you basically like if you make like a bad move or something you get yourself stuck essentially oh yeah absolutely so that's totally how the, like what can happen in this like i think in the trailer because the this was a kickstarter game mm -hmm. um and in their kickstarter trailer there's a spot where it's like um be careful going after the treasures because greed may be your downfall yeah <laughs> and i was like how did they know that's how i played yes <laughs> how did they know Cause that's exactly why i lost when we played before yeah was that i wanted to get the i wanted a, a shield i wanted the shield i needed it and i'm I just totally screwed up my play going after one item. Yeah. <laughs> but 
I thought that it's really neat. I, I, I like that this is like that, that they, they encourage collaboration, you know, like, like sit down with a group of people and figure this out, you know, pu puzzle your way through. But mm -hmm. you can also just sit down and challenge yourself, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, you beat, beat your beat your last best score, basically. Yeah. You know, and I, I thought that's really neat. And so I'm really glad that we kind of we bought this on a whim yes. because we saw <laughs> it and thought it looked cool. But at the same time, we didn't we didn't get a chance to play it at PAX, because I think when we came by the first time, we saw people playing it, mm -hmm. and we're like, wow, that looks neat, we'll come back. And then we came back when we were leaving, and yeah. we're just like, we'd like to buy one, please, and they, and they sold us the game, and we left. Yes. And so and then we, we, fig we had to figure it out at home how to actually play the thing. Yeah. So, but it was really great. I mean, I, I, I think it's fun. I, I'd actually like to sit down with you some more and try to figure this out. I don't think my head quite works this way. <laughs> but um i'd like it to so so maybe you could teach me how to puzzle through this yeah but i, I really like it so yeah so what Did is that did we say uh... who that was by the game who made the game oh i feel so bad yes this is um <laughs> cristallo or yeah cristallo by light heart games yes. we will have a link in the description go and pick this bad boy up it is amazing um yeah it is a ton of fun i i really like it say so definitely definitely a glad definitely glad that we have this on our uh in our in our board game ca board game closet yeah and this is something too like i i said before when i talked about solitaire in my top five where i can just take a deck of cards with me on you know a business trip if those ever happen again and i could <laughs> and i could just play you know solitaire in the hotel room on my own this is it's it's super small it's literally a deck of cards and a little bag of gems and the rule book and that's it and it, it comes in a nice velvet pouch and so it's another one that i could just throw in my suitcase doesn't take up any space and just take it with me so that if i'm bored you know at night i can just play a few rounds by myself and i really like that with games yeah all right so um so yeah, so that was it. We talked about our uh, our two board, our two video games, and our board game. So I think that's going to be it for us um, for this week. Uh, I think this is the last episode before the uh, the new year, right? I think that's right. Um, so yeah, so if um, <laughs> like I said, we'll we'll we're going to be we're going to continue doing the podcast into the new year. So we look forward to seeing y'all in uh, in twenty twenty one. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs>